Okay, so make sure you have a blanket. You can get a block or two if you have them. And we're gonna start by rolling up our blanket into like a cylinder thing. And then it doesn't matter really where you are on your mat, probably towards the front. You're just gonna place the blanket down and then step on it with your toes. So my heels are on the mat and the balls of my feet are on the blanket. And then I'm gonna bend my knees and then just roll myself down. So we're in a forward fold, <laughs> rolling down. And you can click play on the playlist whenever if you wanna turn it on, otherwise, no worries. But just notice what your legs start to feel like. Notice if you have more weight on your heels than your toes. You can rock forward and back and side to side. This just gets a little bit more into the backs of the hamstrings and the calves as you bend forward this way. Relax your head, shake it yes and no. Make sure the crown of your head and not your forehead is straight down towards the floor. So you're not like looking out in front of you and having tension in your neck. And then you can just sway your upper body from side to side too. Your hands can do whatever they want. And you can also close your eyes. Notice how you're breathing. Make sure you still have that bend in your knees. Your knees are tracking over your toes so they're not knocking in towards one another or splaying out. Take one more breath here. And then you're gonna come up onto your fingertips and walk your hands straight out in front of you. Cool, so now we feel a bit of an opening in our armpits. You're looking out in between your hands, and then you can walk your hands over to the right. So that it's like they're at two o'clock on a clock face. Hips are still pressing back in the same line. Your head can drop or it can stay looking out in between your hands. Opening up the left side body. One more breath. And as you exhale, walking your hands through center and all the way over to the left to 10 o'clock on a clock face. Cool. Still pressing down through all parts of the feet. Your knees are still tracking over your toes. You're pressing down through your heels and walking out with your fingers. Up and over to the left. One more breath. And then come back through center. Bring your hands back under your shoulders, sway from side to side. And then slowly roll yourself up, keeping this rounded spine. Your head is last to come up to the sky or on top of your shoulders. And then once you get to the top, you can just roll your shoulders back, step off the blanket. So now you have your two feet strongly down on the mat and then hook your thumbs in front of you and then lift them up overhead. Cool. And then you're gonna just tick tock from right to left letting your left hip go out to the left as you go to the right and vice versa. Right hip to the right as you go to the left with your arms. And you can have still a slight bend in your knees, give you more leverage to move. Take one more to either side. Cool. And then coming back up through center, just let your hands drop and shake them out. Take one big circle with the arms to the front and another big circle to the arms to the back. Cool. 
Then you can step your blanket a little bit further back just so your toes are still on the mat. And then step on the blanket again so that your toes are on the mat and your heels are on the blanket. You can be a little bit wider than hips width distance. Cool. So then once you're there, find the bend in your knees again and then leading with the head, roll yourself down. Cool, as slowly as you want to. And then once you get there, you can sway again and notice how this feels different. Your legs seem a little more open. Keep bending the knees to give you more space and energy through the legs. And your hands, once again, can do anything. They can interlace behind your back. They can interlace behind your neck. If you have a ponytail or something, you can just pull on your ponytail down towards the ground. Just getting deeper into the forward folds. You can sway forward and back or side to side on your feet. Take two more cycles of breath as slow or as fast as you want. And after you finish your two, you're going to let your arms go. And then you're just going to bend your knees so you come into a squat and your knees are going to come into your armpits. Yeah. Cool. So now we're in this interesting squat-like position. And then we're going to gracefully just sit down behind us on our butt. Yay, so now we're on our butts. OK, you can remove your blanket and then just scoot yourself back so your feet are still on the mat. Your knees are still bent. Reaching your arms out in front of you, slowly roll yourself down onto the mat so you're coming onto your back. Cool. Vertebra by vertebra as you go down. Head is last to come down. Bring your feet so they're underneath your knees, still at hips with distance. You can have your arms come down by your sides and try to touch your heels so you know that your feet are in the right place. Inhaling, lift your right leg up to the sky and interlace your hands behind your right hamstring. Notice what your left knee is doing. It should still be tracked over your left toes. Your foot can take circles. Your right foot can take circles or point and flex it or do nothing with it. It can just stay flexed. And then just take a gentle tug of your thigh towards your chest. One more cycle of breath. And then exhale, let that go and cross your right foot on top of your left knee and interlace your hands behind your left hamstring and pull this into your chest. You can think about pressing out with your right knee so your knee is pressing forward and your left knee is pulling in towards you. Both feet are flexed as if they're pressing up against a wall or just imagine you're standing on them. Your entire lower back is on the ground and your shoulders. So notice if your shoulders came up towards your ears a little bit. One more breath here. And then exhale, let the left foot come down, let the right foot come down. And then just rock your knees from side to side. Cool, hands can be anywhere. And then inhale, interlace your hands, but the weird way. So opposite pointer finger is on top and lift your left leg up towards the ceiling. Take whatever circles or points and flex with your foot that you want. Make sure your right knee is in the right, same line as your right toes. And gently tug your left leg towards your chest. Breathing deeply into whatever sensation you're feeling. One more breath. Pull a little closer to you. And then let your 
left ankle, cross over your right knee. Keep the interlace or interlace your hands the weird way again, this time behind the right hamstring, pulling your right knee in towards your chest and pressing your left knee towards the front of where you are, your screen, your camera. Flexing both feet, shoulders down, releasing any tension that's in your jaw or your forehead. One more breath here. And then exhale, place your right foot down, place your left foot down, and then heel toe your feet out so they're as wide as the mat and let your knees knock in on one another. And once again, take those rocks from side to side with your knees. Cool. And the next time that your knees are on the right side, stay there and then let your right foot come on top of your left knee thigh area. And your right hand can come to your right knee your left hand can come out to a T on the left side and your face can turn and look over your left shoulder. So you're getting a nice twist as well as a lengthening in your left thigh. One more breath. And then let that come back to center. Come back to feet as wide as the mat. Rock a little bit. And then the next time you're on the left side, come into the same thing. So left ankle on top of right knee, slash thigh, left hand on top of left knee, and right arm out to the right. Gaze looking over the right shoulder. One more breath. And then exhale. Come back to center, feet as wide as the mat, rock one more time. And then hug your knees in towards your chest, give yourself a big squeeze. You can once again rock side to side and then rock yourself forward and back enough so that you get momentum to come sit up and roll over your ankles and then come into an all fours position. Great. So we're in all fours. We have our hands underneath our shoulders, our knees underneath our hips, tops of the feet pressing down into the mat. And then we're gonna begin our cats and cows, inhaling as you arch and exhaling as you round. And just keep going on your own, whatever feels nice. Pressing strongly into all parts of the hand the fingers, the knuckles, the thumb, and all parts of the shin, all parts of the tops of the feet and the tops of the toenails, initiating the movement from your pelvis. So you're moving your hips up and down, which allows the rest of your body to follow. Take this for five, four, three, two, one. And then our favorite thing, you're gonna flip your wrists around 180 degrees. And if that's too much, feel free to just go 90. But what is this? The back, the fronts of the wrist? I don't know what parts of the wrist this is. But they're parallel with the front of the mat. And then you're gonna take circles to the right. You can shake your head out. You can relax your jaw. See how far you can go back with your butt towards your heels and how far you can go forward over your wrists. I guess this is the underside of your wrists. I don't know what the anatomical term is. I should probably learn it. And take one more to the right and then switch your direction. Imagining that you're pulling your elbows away from each other so your right elbow is going out to the right with a slight bend in it, and your left elbow is going out to the left with a slight bend in it, and that keeps your frame wide and strong so your arms don't get locked or anything. 
take one more circle to the left and then come back to center. Take a moment just with the wrist slipped and then let that go. Fist bump your hands together and then place that underneath your shoulders. From here, you can just rock forward and back and open up the other side of the wrist. I'm not sure I understand. Siri always talks to me. Cool, take a few more. This is really good because we type in text all day. So this opens up all parts of the wrist. Great, one more. And then come back into a normal all fours. Grounding down through your hands, grounding down through the tops of the feet. Tuck your right toes, straighten your right leg, and then just take some pulses with your right leg behind you. Cool. One more breath. And then turn the sole of the right foot down, reach your right arm up, and so you're in your modified side plank. Cool. From here, see if you can either or both lift your right leg up as you reach your right arm over your ear. So just a little bit more of a balance. One more breath. And then place your right hand back down. See if you can leave your right leg lifted. Lift your left arm out in front of you so you have a bit of a equal and opposite core engagement. One more breath. Bring your left hand back down. Bring your right knee back down, other side. Pulses with the left calf, tucking the left toes behind you. One more. And then spin the sole of the left foot down. Come into your modified side plank. Shoulders in one line, you can look out in front of you, you can, you can look down at your hand, whatever's nicer on the neck. And then see if you can either lift your leg, bring your arm over your ear, do both, do neither, all good. Bring your left hand back underneath your shoulder, keep your left leg lifted, and then reach your right arm straight out in front of you. One more breath. Engaging your core. And then bring your right hand back down, left knee back down. Place your hands, a palm print in front of where they are. Tuck your toes behind you and then begin to come into your first downward facing dog. Hunch it there. Bring your body forward and through to a plank pose just to measure it out. And if you have to move your hands or feet, keep them there and then bend your knee and stick your butt up. So when you're in your down dog, imagine that you're pressing strongly down with your hands and pressing strongly back with your heels. So you have that full circuitous motion going from the hands up to the butt and down to the heels and then down into the ground. Have a slight bend in your knees. Make sure your feet are at hips width distance and your hands are in line with your shoulders. You can imagine wrapping your biceps up towards the ceilings and the tricep down to the floor. One more breath. And then bring your body forward and through to a plank pose. And slowly, slowly lower yourself down, bringing your elbows in towards your chest as you lower your body to the ground. Cool. So now we're on the ground. From there, you're going to inhale and take a little baby cobra. Inhaling as you arch, head, neck, chest up. Exhale, bring it all back down. Cool. Bring a palm, uh, take a palm, uh, palm pillow underneath your forehead. So bring your palms right underneath your forehead. And then just rock your hips from side to side. Cool. From there, keep your elbows and shoulder where they are and just open your hands out. So they were on top of one another and now they're just 
in a straight line next to each other and they're parallel. So your forehead's going to come down onto the mat. You're going to place your left hand under, back underneath your shoulder and then roll over onto your right side. Now we're opening up the shoulder and the pec muscle. And you can bring your left leg and step it back behind you, or you can just leave it on top of your right leg. Rocking forward and back a little bit. Cool. And then roll yourself back to center. Bring your left arm out on its goalpost-like position. Bring your right hand back underneath your shoulder. Left ear comes to the ground and roll yourself onto the left side. Your right foot can do whatever it wants. Coming back behind you, replacing it on the ground. And then roll yourself back to center. Cool. Finding that palm pillow again underneath your forehead and then just rock your hips from side to side. Now imagine you're gonna replace your elbows with your hands and your elbows are gonna face up towards the sky. So I'm gonna move my hands to where my elbows are. I'm gonna just come onto my fingertips and my elbows are gonna face up towards the sky. And as I inhale, I'm gonna arch my back again like we did in the cobra and undulate my spine up towards the sky. So inhale, rolling up through the spine, and then exhale, let yourself come back down. Exactly. Inhaling as you arch and exhaling as you come back down. And just take two more of those. One. And exhale. And inhale. Arms don't need to come entirely straight. And then place your hands underneath your shoulders after your last one. Tuck your toes behind you and bring your toes together. Cool, so your legs are kind of in this one long line. Place your knees back down on the ground and just press yourself back into this tuck toed seat. Sorry, Lisa. Lisa hates this pose, but it's definitely good for you because you're the one who's hiking and skiing the most. So once you're here, make sure that your toes are tucked under you. Untuck the pinky, make sure everything's tucked. And then you're gonna interlace your hands a normal way and press them in front of you. Reach them up towards the sky and then take circles behind your head. Take five to the right and then you'll flip the interlace and then take five to the left. So now you're your own timer because once you finish these 10 circles, then you're out of this pose. So if you hate this pose, you can do them very fast and then you're out of it faster. But if you don't mind it or you like it, you can do it slower. <laughs> Lisa already did her 10. <laughs> cool. D and I will finish. And then from there, Lisa, you can just come into the opposite thing where we tuck our toes under and try to lift our knees. Yeah, cool. So once you finish the 10, you can place your hands back down, untuck the toes, and then place your hands by your hips. If you have blocks, you can place your hands on blocks and then just lift, try to lift your knees. Yay. I wonder if Fog still does this every day, Dee. He definitely doesn't. I see you shaking your head. <laughs> cool. Take one more and then come back to your knees. Widen your knees as wide as the mat, but keep your big toes together and then just come back into a child's pose. Letting your forehead relax on the ground, letting your hips come back towards your heels and take whatever feels comfortable. Awesome. Breathing into the connection of your forehead into the mat.
and just letting your body relax. Take one more deep inhale and exhale. And then press yourself forward and up back into your downward facing dog. Cool. From here, lift your right leg up, down dog split. Keep it in the same line as your hip. Have a slight bend in your left knee. And then bring your right foot to your right thumb. Finding another connection between the armpit and your knee. And then place your back knee down, untuck the back toes, and just find your low crescent lunge position before we come up. Cool. Bring your hands forward and out so they're on a little bit of a V shape. And then reach your arms forward, out, and up so you're coming up over your hips. Grab for opposite elbow overhead, make a frame for your face, press your hips forward, and then let your gaze come up a little bit so you have a slight arch in your back. Take one more breath here. Notice that your right knee is right on top of your right ankle and tracking over your right toes. See if you can feel all five toenails of the left foot pressing down into the ground. And then reach your arms up by your ears Place your hands back down to frame your front foot. And then flexing your right toes up towards the ceiling, bend into your left knee a little bit more and come into this half runner stretch. Cool. And take a few sways with your hips from side to side. Looking down and out in front of you and not just crunching our head behind us. Although that does feel nice sometimes. Staying on your fingertips if you can. If you need blocks, feel free. And then strongly press your right foot back down. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. Strongly place your left hand on the ground. And then reach your right arm up towards the sky, spitting your chest open to the right. One more breath here. Hips are still square. And then circle your right arm over and begin to straighten into the right leg as you press strongly down through the front of the right foot. This time, head can just drop and tuck in towards your right knee. Hands can be on blocks if that feels nice or just on fingertips. One more breath. Bending into the right knee again, strongly press your palms into the mat and step back into a plank pose. One cycle of breath here. And then exhale, bend the knees, stick the butt up, downward facing dog. Cool. On your next inhale, lift your left leg up, down dog split. Exhale, bring your left foot to your left thumb. Find your measure, knee on top of ankle, right knee comes back down, untuck the right toes, finding the connection of knee to armpit. And then walk your hands about a few inches or centimeters forward, and then reach them up towards the sky. So your torso is right on top of your waist, your hips are pressing forward, and then grab for the opposite, opposite elbow grip. Kara just gave me a thumbs up. Pressing your hips forward. See if you can think about lifting up and out as you strongly press down through your feet. One more breath. Let your arms come up towards the ceiling, place them back down on the ground, flexing your left toes this time as you come into the half runner's lunge. And you can stay in stillness or you can sway your hips from side to side. You can sway your foot from side to side. That gives you a bit of a stretch on each part of your hamstring which is always nice. One more breath. Strongly place your left foot back down into the ground. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, press your palm of the right hand into the mat. Lift your left arm up towards the sky. Gaze up at your left thumb. See if you can twist with your upper body while keeping your lower body 
still very stable. Exhaling, swim the left hand over, place it down onto the ground outside your left foot and begin to straighten into your left knee. Try to keep a little bit of a slight bend in the left knee so you don't just lock out your leg. Still pressing strongly through the front of the left foot. You can sway your hips here again. You can shake out your head, yes and no, relaxing the jaw. Exhale, bend into your left knee. Step back into your plank pose. One cycle of breath. Bend the knees, stick the butt up, downward facing dog. Cool. From here, you're gonna walk your hands back towards your feet. Once again, coming into a forward fold. So you can measure it out hip width distance by putting two fists next to each other in between your arches. And then just let your body hang and find your opposite elbow grab. Awesome. Have a slight bend in your knees. Have equal weight in the fronts of the feet, the backs of the feet, so that you feel like you're standing in the middle of your foot. And then keep a strong bend in your knees. We're gonna go into a chair pose like thing. So you're gonna bend into your knees my chest is trying to stay on my thighs as much as it can and keeping the strong bend in your knees, bend a little bit more and then lift up only your upper body. So now I'm in a chair pose with my arms still in this opposite elbow thing. And then after you can't take it anymore, you're still in your chair pose. Look down, see if you can see your toes. Still in your chair pose. And then you can straighten your legs, reach your arms up towards the sky and just let that go. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, but this one is fun. From here, one more big circle with the arms forward and back. And then just your shoulders, just to loosen everything up. And then reach your arms up, grab the opposite elbow, and then switch which elbow is on top. And then once again, same thing, chair pose this way. So find your legs, what we call the first floor of the body, very stable in your legs. All parts of the feet pressing down, see if you can bend a little bit deeper. And then just the upper body moves. So your legs, knees stay like this, bring your chest onto your thighs. Fold in towards yourself, and then you can just let that go and come into a normal forward fold, letting your arms hang, whatever feels nice. Taking any grip that you want. Cool. Begin to walk yourself back into your downward facing dog. Find the bend in your knees. Notice if your legs feel any different or if they feel a bit more warmed up. And then without lifting your leg, just step your right foot up towards your right thumb. Great. Spin the back foot down like we did in that modified side plank. So now we're kind of in a warrior one stance, but we're just gonna come and straighten our leg a bit here and come into a pyramid pose. So my hips are square. You can have your hands on blocks if that's nice for you. Hips are in one line. And if you feel like you need to take some more of a dynamic movement and bend into the leg and then straighten it and just keep that going, that's totally fine. Head is looking down and out in front of you. Noticing the whole back part of the left foot pressing down into the mat. So you're firmly on two feet. One more breath. And then bend into your right knee. Come into your right lunge. Strongly plant your left arm down this time. Come onto the outer edge of the left foot and the outer edge of the right foot. 
So this is a really weird lunge thing. You can bring your right hand to your right hip, but this feels really nice on the outer edge of the right hip. And then you can probably guess where we're going. Step your left foot or your right foot on top of your left foot coming into your side plank. You can once again come into the modified side plank or bring your right foot in front of your left foot, whatever feels stable. One more breath, lifting your hips up so they're in the same line as your heart. And then swim your right arm forward, come into your plank pose, bend the knees, come into your downward facing dog. Great. This time, step your left foot to your left thumb. Great, finding your left low lunge. Spin the sole of the back foot down. You can step it in a bit. So if you wanna bring it closer to your left foot, feel free. Your legs are on two straight lines. So they're on like train tracks and then you can straighten into your left leg. You wanna take the bends and straightens. Feel free to do that. Or you can take a different arm variation on this side. You can flip your hands around and walk them back. You can walk them forward. You can hold on to your left ankle and find your balance. You can do anything. I'm gonna stay not creative and just place my hands down underneath my shoulders. <laughs> Feeling the whole part of the right foot, the whole back part pressing down. Hips are still in one line. Front of the left foot is still pressing down. Don't let those left toes come off the floor. And then bending into the left knee. Come back into your low lunge. Armpit to knee. Place the right hand down. Place the left hand on your hip. And then come on the outer edge of the right foot and the outer edge of the left foot. So you're in this weird, I don't know what this is called, weird version of a lunge. And then step your left foot on top of your right foot, coming into a side plank. And your head can look out in front of you, can look down towards your thumb, or can look up towards your left thumb. One more breath. Lift the hips up a little more. And then swim your left arm over, come into your plank pose for a hot sec. And then bend the knees, stick the butt up, now we're facing dog. One more breath here. Can pedal the knees out if that feels nice. Inhaling, lift your left leg up, down dog split, and then bend the knee and open the hip. Great. Take a few circles here with the knee and then straighten out your right leg. Inhaling, bring your right knee behind your right wrist, coming into pigeon on this side. So you have your blanket and block, maybe. I'm gonna put my blanket underneath my hips to bring the ground up to me, just cause when the ground is closer to you, your hips can relax more in the shape and then you get more out of it. So find, set up your pose, and then you can walk your hands out in front of you. Bring them into a really big diamond shape and let your forehead come down onto the ground. If you have blocks, you can place one underneath your chest and then if you had another one, you can place it underneath your face. I'm just gonna come over this one and hopefully won't break the shoe box, but you can take any sort of variation with the blocks and the props, whatever feels nice as you bend over. Most importantly though, this pose is for the hips. So you want your hips square, you want your hips relaxed so that they can open up, which is why we put stuff underneath our hips so that they can relax. The muscles can have more space. The joints can have more space. And then your hips will feel better and it'll be easier to walk upstairs or just walk around in general. Take a few more deep breaths here. Seeing where you might be holding tension that isn't in your hips, like your shoulders or your jaw, and trying to inhale into it and then exhaling and releasing it all out. 
If you walk your elbows out a little bit more to the right and left, your shoulders can relax and release a little bit more. You can rock your forehead side to side to give it a little bit of a massage. And just breathe into the sensation of the right hip. One more cycle of breath. And as you exhale, begin to use your hands to bring yourself up. Move any props out away from you. And then you're going to swing your left leg around. You can sit up on this blanket if it feels like it's helping you. And helping means that it's helping you sit up taller so that you're not rounded like this. You're sitting up on like one line. And you're going to place your left foot on top of your right, coming into ankle to knee. Both feet are flexed. And then if this feels like a lot, you can just stay here. Or you can use your block again and bring your forearms on it. Or you can come down all the way in front of you if you can do that. But most important thing here is that your back is long. So if you feel at all that you're going like this as you try to move forward, then just sit up tall. Cool. One more cycle of breath. And then let that go. Move any props that you had. Try to swing your left leg around yourself with no hands. Woohoo! And then place your hands on the ground, tuck your back toes, lift your back knee, and step yourself back into a downward facing dog. We haven't done an up dog yet in class, so let's take a few now. So you're going to inhale, roll your spine forward, and then let your hips drop, keep your toes tucked, and let your chest come through your arms. Yeah, bend the knees, stick the butt up, downward facing dog. Take that two more times on your own. Keeping the integrity of the legs, strong legs behind you, shoulders down away from the ears, and then we'll all meet in a down dog. Inhale, reach your left leg up, and then exhale, bend the knee, open up the hip, take a few circles, notice what your upper body is doing, and straighten into the left leg, and then bring it behind the left wrist. So I left my blanket here. If you left your blanket there, that's totally fine. Just move it over a little bit to whatever feels nice. And then this side is probably a little bit different than the other one. So set yourself up with what you need. And then whenever you're ready, you can walk your arms forward and down and your chest down over your shin or over a prop. Your feet and just relax you don't need to be engaged here and just breathe deeply into whatever connection or sensation you have opening up the hips opens up the lower part of the body a lot and gives us more mobility in all parts of our legs if our hips and our butt have more space and more mobility to move around. So it's always good to spend a little extra time on the hips or in pigeon or another variation of pigeon so that the hips can stay mobile and we can keep moving easily. A few more cycles of breath. Noticing the speed of your breath. Notice if your mind has wandered. Think about other things. Bring it back to the breath. And whatever your sensations you're feeling in your body in this pose.
And on your next exhale, let your arms lock you up. Moving a block out if you had it and swinging your right leg around for ankle to knee on this side. So you can sit up on your blanket still or come down onto the floor. Your right ankle comes on top of your left knee, left ankle is under your right knee. Your legs are in like two straight lines on top of each other. So it looks like, we can't really see it because I'm wearing all black, but you know what I mean. So from here, find whatever movement forward or sitting up tall feels nice. And you can always close your eyes too, if that helps, if there's a lot of sensation in your hips. Take a few more cycles of breath, sitting equally on both sides of your butt. Notice if your shoulders have come up towards your ears, engaging both feet. One more breath, and then exhale, come back up. Once again, no hands. See if you can swing your right leg around behind you. Woohoo. Place your hands down, tuck your back toes, lift your back knee, and step yourself back into a downward facing dog. Take an inhale to an up dog and exhale to a down dog. Great, and then finding your down dog here, bending the knees, sticking your butt up to the sky for the last time, the most formal version of your down dog. And then bend the knees, place them on the ground, place them as wide as the mat, and then come back into one more child's pose. My blanket is still here, so if you want to use it at all for something, you can. Well, we'll just come into a normal child's pose, and then I'll switch it up. So take a few cycles of breath here, and then we can do a different child's pose with the blanket. Breathing, seeing if you can walk your hands a little bit more out in front of you to give your armpits a bit more of a stretch. And see if you can continue to press your hips back. Great. Cool. Roll yourself back up. So now you're sitting kind of in this wide knee thing. And you're going to grab your blanket. If it's not rolled up, you can roll it up. And then you're just going to place it up into the backs of the knees. So really stuck it in there, stick it in there. And then sit back on your heels. And then come forward into a child's pose. Yeah. And this just feels nice, giving you, giving you a little bit more of a lift. Cool. And then without moving your upper body, see if you can just bring your arms back by your heels and then bring the blanket, you can stick your butt up a little bit, bring the bank blanket onto the backs of the heels so it helps you stick your butt towards uh, towards the blanket. Kind of like you're making a sandwich with your heels, your butt, and then the blankets in the middle. And then you can stick your arms back out in front of you or you can leave them behind you. Whatever feels nice to you on your shoulders. Great. Using your arms to press yourself up one more time. We're going to take the blanket 
and you're gonna keep it in its roll and set it up like basically in the middle of the mat maybe a little bit more forward and then you're gonna bring your hips so that your lower belly comes right onto the blanket and then just let yourself come forward nice so you can bring another palm pillow to your um forehead here or you can bring your arms out into that other cactus shape that we did and bring one ear to one side i'll let you know when to switch sides so no stress there and just breathe into the pressure that's on your lower belly. Sometimes we do this same pose on blocks, which gives you a little bit more of a sensation, so you can feel free to try that at any time. Another day or after this, <laughs> but this is good for digestion and just getting into helping you notice where you're breathing if you're making it all the way down to breathing into your lower belly. Switch which ear is on the mat if you're doing that. There's also a gentle shoulder opener too, if you have your arms out or if you have the palm pillow. Relax into your shoulders or towards the final few minutes of class. So see if you can notice all the little places that you might be holding tension and try to relax them. Could be a pinky finger or an eye or a forehead, or a bigger muscle like your entire left leg. And then come back to center, place your hands underneath your shoulders, forehead on the mat, and then press yourself back up so you're sitting on your heel. We're only here for a hot second, so don't worry. You're gonna take your blanket and bring it up a little bit further. And then you're gonna turn around and lie on your blanket. So the blanket comes and, and ends up being like right where your bra line or your shoulder blades are. So this just gives you a little bit of a slight back bend. Cool. And then your legs can stay bent if that feels nice with the feet planted on the ground or they can come splayed out into a prep for Shavasana. And then your arms, they can come into a T on either side of you, a cactus shape, or they could even come a little bit more up overhead, whatever feels nice to you. And you can imagine you're making a snow angel out in the snow. And make sure that every part that's touching the ground is not touching anything to either side of you or another proper random furniture piece. So you are like a little free bird in space, just lying here with your heart reaching up towards the sky. Try to relax more into your butt and your shoulders. That means taking any wiggles or shakes. Go for it. And you can take a big shoulder roll down the back to bring your shoulders away from the ear. Few more cycles of breath. Noticing if you can still breathe deeply into the lower body when there's a lower belly, when there's nothing there pressing against it.
And then you can stay here for the last minute or two, or you can remove the blanket and just come into a normal Shavasana. And once you're there, whatever choice you're making, really just let your body melt into the ground. As if you are being melted by fire, like you're a candle or a marshmallow or ice cream. Coming back to your breath, if your mind wandered off, notice if your breath slowed down a little bit more, if it stayed the same or sped up. And then bring some wiggles into your legs and your arms. You can take some snow angel motions if that feels nice. Taking up as much space as you want. And then place the soles of your feet down into the mat, knees up towards the sky. And then bring your right arm up by your ear, keeping it on the floor and then roll over onto your right side. Keeping your eyes closed. One more breath. And then press yourself up, coming into a comfortable seat, seated on a block in Varasana or a blanket cross-legged whatever feels comfortable. You can place your hands face down or face up on your knees. And just try to remember everything we did today, how it felt, if it was good or bad, what that might mean to you. It's all just information, nothing to judge or take personally or criticize. It just is what it is. It was what it was. And it happened and now it's over. So nothing is permanent, which is a good and bad thing sometimes, depending on what pose we're in and if we like it, but also in life. There are good things that we wish would last longer and there are bad things that we wish would end right away. Take one more deep inhale and exhale. Inhaling through the nose and exhaling out the mouth. 
and then press your hands together at the center of your chest. We'll end practice with the final bow. Namaste. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Yay, thanks, thanks, so thanks guys. Thanks for so coming. Nice. That was very Yay. nice. Yay. Oh, good. I'm glad.